have the honor to introduce a Kathy DeRoche, Director of Sales, Western Canada, Oceana. And again, an excellent, excellent woman to have in your corner, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Annabelle Sow uh, is Director of Sales for Merit Travel. And we'll continue on. Everybody now, have, sorry, everybody um, that's on here knows a little bit about Merit. And uh, we are a full service travel company that connects people to travel experiences from adventure travel, hosted trips, cruises to extended stay, golf week and getaways, and anything you can dream up to explore on this planet. Our physical locations are closed, but my colleagues, over a hundred of them, are ready and available by phone from coast to coast to help you with all your travel needs. Please visit us at merittravel.com for any questions you have. The next screen that you're seeing is all about insurance. I think in today's climate, you know that you can't travel without insurance. It's the what ifs, and we are partnered with Allianz Insurance, and they take care of that what if. Please do not book any travel without insurance. So welcome uh, again. <laughs> we're part of the Signature Travel Network. Um, we're here um, to talk about Oceana Cruises. As I said, I have traveled on Oceana Cruises twice. And in my 30 years of uh, being an agent, it is one of the best cruises, uh, if not the best mm -hmm. that I have been on. It's the attention to detail. So I'm going to pass it over to the ladies and we'll go for. Forward. Thanks so much, Holly. And everybody, I'm Kathy Denroach, uh, as Holly uh, introduced us, and my beautiful partner, Tina White, uh, with us today. And I just have to say, yes, you can't travel without insurance these days. But honestly, I think we're all here just to have a really big kind of overall picture of how we can dream about where we're going to go next and things that Oceana is doing. Do you know, I've been in the cruise industry for 44 years. I started with the Love Boat here in Vancouver. So so I'm kind of the oldest cruise person in Canada, but I have to say I've loved our industry. I love all ships. I love all the cruise lines, and we're all so very, very different from each other. And today I just want to talk to you about Oceana because I've been here for uh, 12 years. And I want to just say that, you know, part of the whole being of 2020 and 2021 now is to kind of dream about where we want to go and to plan our trips and discover one thing that we're noticing at Oceana is and you are probably noticing as well is that the pent-up demand is starting to really just show these huge signs of unbelievable kind of uh, success for the end of 21 and into 22. In fact 2022 looks like an absolutely amazing year. Do you know after all all these years in the business, I can tell you that when I look at the travel business being the second largest industry in the world, the world actually couldn't survive without a travel business because we're all so interconnected. When you think about a ship sailing in the water, it has to go to a port. That port has to have taxi drivers, hotels, and you know, uh, shore excursions and everything. And so we're all interconnected. And what's happened is that you know, we've had a lot of things hit us over the many years I've been in the industry especially to the cruise industry, but cruising is one of the safest ways you can ever travel. Now we've been targeted a lot this last year, but that's because for the last 40 years, we're the only entity in the entire travel business that has to report to the CDC, the Center of Disease Control and Prevention. And I think what when I look at that and I think, gee, in incredible, you haven't had resorts, hotels, airlines, anybody else having to report their viruses or anything to us. So we're an incredibly safe industry to begin with. But now what's going to happen as we move forward, we're going going to actually start to look at how we can return with even better than ever 
health regulations and who we are as a cruise line. Do you know, I came from, I was with Crystal Cruises right up at the top of the luxury market for 18 years before I joined Oceana. And I've now been here for 12 years and it flies by. But I have to say, one of the things I loved to return to was the fact that Oceana came out 18 years ago, started this incredible uh, niche in the travel business in the and especially in the cruise industry called Upper Premium. They kept meant they kind of wedged their way in between these beautiful big premium ships and then the six star luxury ships so we were more inclusive than the big beautiful partners we have like princess and hall in america and celebrity and things like that but we weren't quite as inclusive as the crystals and the regents and the silver sea cruises so we hit this niche called upper premium and we made a mark and we said we we're going to do things differently we were going to have this incredible product that was small but intimate attention to deta detail as holly said and have this kind of experience when you came on the ship that was rivaled to no one else and in the first nine months of Oceana's existence 18 years ago, Oceana became one of the top 10 cruise lines in the world. And we still lead the way in what we call the upper premium market. So I know Tina's going to share with you about cuisine and kind of the some of the value and we're going to hop back and forth. But the one thing I will say is that everybody so far is kind of interested in what's going to happen with health and safety. Well, the answer truly is that we're working on so many things behind the scenes every day, every week. But back in June, when we were already a healthy sale kind of cruise line, and all cruise lines really were, we actually even decided to get 12 scientists from all over the world, all over different kind of areas of science, from CDC to environmental to every kind of uh, kind of uh, science-based uh, company you could think of. And they put together a, a 74 page detailed thing of the, what we could do better as cruise lines. And we partnered with Royal Caribbean Group. So Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings, which Oceana is part of and Royal Caribbean Group got together with this incredible team of people based on science and said, this is what we're going to do when we kind of narrowed it down to five focus areas, one being air filtration you know we've got a brand new system on our ships coming in to every single ship before we even put our ships back in the water that'll have the cleanest air ever when it comes to crew when it comes to uh, shore excursions when it comes to sanitation all these things are being worked at and everything we do is so fluid right now because we have to wait for the cdc to approve everything but the fact is behind the scenes oceana is working incredibly hard and diligently to make sure that would before we put one of our guests on the ship one of our crew on our ships that we are completely healthy and for more information you can always go to our website right down at the bottom of the page and you'll see our health protocols there. But I have to say that when I look at Oceana, I have no worries whatsoever as to the safety of our crew and our guests and our ship because it's all coming and you'll be able to see as we go along. Now, things have changed a little bit. You know, as you've seen in the past, some of the uh, cruise lines have started sailing and when they go on shore excursions, they all have to go together before they get off the ship. Things will change as we go along and with vaccines coming out now, it's so exciting and because we're seeing that pendulum that stopped for a short while start to swing back and people are getting this pent up demand to want to go away on uh, their cruise. They wanna kind of go back to where they have been familiar with. The real trend is coming with coming with flexibility to you. That's one of the things that I love about Ocean after 12 years is that we actually want to inspire you to travel, but we also want to give you a little bit of confidence and a little bit of room to move, a little bit of flexibility. So we save everything we can when it comes to financial work. So we have a new kind of program that we brought out this last year called our Traveler's Assurance Program. It's not an insurance program, but it's an assurance program that helps you be able to make decisions decisions with a lot of confidence, knowing that you can have a refund or you can, when we cancel a sailing, or we can move it into a, a future cruise credit that will give you a bit of flexibility that with any public pricing will always protect the best price first. So even if you book now for something in 2022 and two months prior to the sailing, we had to drop our price for some reason, you know, I can tell you that we will always guarantee the best price. Now, that's the one thing I want to talk to you about because Ocean is such an 
exciting little cruise line. And I say little because we're based on small ship luxury. And one of the things when I left Crystal to come to Oceana was because of these beautiful three ships we had sailing. They were only 40,000 tons. They were just at 30,000 tons. That meant that three of our little ships could fit into any large ship you see in the waters. And with small luxury comes amazing destinations. We get into ports, for instance, that other big ships can't get into. And as the world starts to change, and you see it in news with Venice and Dubrovnik saying we can't take big ships anymore, we are so excited to be able to still have small ships be able to come and dock in front of the Hermitage when we come to St. Petersburg, etc. So right now in our fleet, we have six ships. And I have to say, I love each one of them because they're so beautifully detailed. So we have this small ship that we made our kind of mark with 18 years ago that we said we're going to go into these beautiful marquee kind of boutique ports and we're going to match that with some really heavy destination uh you know itineraries and so we're very immersive in our destinations ocean is in a cruise line that you'll see a lot of a time at sea other than if you're crossing oceans but the fact is we're very port intensive we're unique we're absolutely beautiful beautiful itineraries coveted by so many in the industry and of course our third pillar these are pillars that we stand on the hearth of our company and it's the real heartbeat of our company is the fact that we are truly the cruise line for foodies and Tina's going to tell you all about that in a while what I want to talk to you today is about our ships when I look at the big ships and as I said at the very beginning I love all the cruise lines we're all so different from each other but when I look at our small little ships it makes me realize that even last year I was sitting in not not in 2020 but in 2019 we had one of our ships the regatta who comes into Vancouver and goes into Victoria and goes up to Alaska and our regatta was sitting between one of the big Royal Caribbean ships and one of the princess ships and I thought isn't that interesting three of these little tiny ships could fit on to the big ship. So what it means for you is it much more intimate. It's much more detailed service. When I think about 670 guests, which is such a perfect size for me, uh, you know, as I'm in my mid 60s, and I kind of think I want smaller when I go on vacation. Now, I think about 675 guests, everybody, and yet 400 crew members are there are staff to take care of you. It means that for every one and a half of you, there's someone to look after you. When I came to Oceana and I had left Crystal, it was because we were building two ships, the Marina and the Riviera, and they were 60,000 tons. They were 1,200 guests, still considered incredibly small in the industry. And now as we start to open up the avenues for Oceana in the next two years, we'll have two other ships in the Allura class, what we call them. So we've got these gorgeous small ships that sail all over the world. And when I think about coming onto these ships, there, there's something about being on a 30,000 ton ship. It's small, it's intimate. You can walk around it in 40 minutes, but it's so elegant. Everything, every single one of our ships has been redone, refurbished, re inspired to come to an era that's just so elegant and it's warm and friendly. So I love the fact that when we come on to any of Oceana ships, whether it's a marina or the uh, Riviera, we've got space to move. It means that there's a lot of space on these ships. It doesn't mean that you're going into empty rooms, but it means that even when you come up onto the deck and you have these beautiful shades that you can sit on, you don't have to reserve your spot. It's not crowded. There's, a, there's so much room for each guest and each of our ships has an incredible residential design. Whether it's accommodations that we come in, we see binoculars, and refrigerators in each room and umbrellas. And we think of everything for our guests. We want everybody to have this incredible intimate experience. But the fact is, is that when I look at an ICR Bulgari toiletries and things like that, and the warmth of the frette bathrobes and sheets, these are the kinds of things that it isn't the reason you buy a cruise, but it's the reason you come back every time and go, wow, it was amazing. So Coupled with this beautiful hardware, our software is the people that work on board the ship. I adore our staff. Everybody is there to make sure that you're having the best vacation you can. And so our service is unrivaled and it really sits up in that very six star luxury market. So that's kind of Oceana and where we sit at. Now what I wanna to talk to you about is 
our first pillar. And that is the really, not only with these small, beautiful ships that sail all over the world, but our beautiful curated travel experiences. Things that when I look at and I see that we go all over the world, and I'm going to show you, but we're going to talk about some of the trends here that we're seeing. But when I talk about uh, what I see about Oceania, when I think about everywhere in the world we go, other than the Antarctic, we mm -hmm. have a beautiful coverage of our ships, and we're not in any destination a long time. We're in for a short spurt that really makes it, you know, kind of ring out. And this is why I will tell you when small ships, this is one of the trends we're seeing, is that everybody's looking at 2020. 22, and there's a lot of people right now who are kind of saying, I want that cruise, but it's waitlisted. And I go, that's right, because small ships are where the travel trend is going to right now. When we look at destinations, this is the kind of thing that we kind of study and we look at where people are going. And for 2021, Mediterranean and Northern Europe and Baltic came out as the two strongest destinations that people were coming to look back. We want you to remember where you've gone. And we started campaigns called Remember the Future. Where could you go? Where have you been before? Where did you want to go back to? And I call it the new familiar because things are going to even just change as they've never changed before when you get onto our ships and it's going to be better than ever. It's going to be newer than ever you've ever seen, but it's going to be the Oceana that you've come to experience. And if you've never experienced Oceana, I can promise you that these are small intimate ships that you're going to absolutely love. So when I think about the Mediterranean, Northern Baltic and Europe, we said when Merritt started talking to us about doing a consumer presentation, we said, OK, let's just talk about Med and Baltic. We can talk about other destinations anytime as well. But these are the two top, top trending destinations. So we're, that's what we're going to talk about today. But when you look at Oceania, we go all over the world. And we go, we don't have very many seven day cruises. We go right up to 180 days around the world. So when you look at this map, we circumnavigate Australia for 35 days. We go both sides of Africa. We do right around South America. We do Panama Canal, but we do Panama Canal as well from Lima, Peru, all the way up to Miami. We go all into Alaska. We come into Canada, New England. We go up to Greenland and Iceland. And we go into the Baltics and all the way up to that little gray blob at the top of your screen there which is Svalbard in the North Cape and there's one off cruises that's Oceana specialty everybody when we talk about our destinations there's so many beautiful cruises and some of them are just one itinerary and once a year that we do and so we want to kind of make you dream and plan and where you want to go and kind of remember where you've been before when I look at this picture I go I want to go back to Tuscany I also want to go back to France I also want to go back on the ship and do the Holy Land. So I want to tell you just a little bit about the Baltic and about the northern part of Europe. And then Tina's going to take over and talk to you about the Mediterranean, some of the really beautiful uh, kind of shore excursions that we do. So we, I hope you can stick with us here and we'll kind of run through it. But this is one of the greatest trends we're seeing is beautiful Iceland and Reykjavik. Now I'm going to show you an itinerary that's in July of 2021. But in 2022, on July 26th, we have a 14 day cruise that goes from New York to Reykjavik as well. What I love about this itinerary, and I know we're talking to a lot of Canadians today, is that we come up from New York into Bar Harbor, which is so beautiful. But then we come into beautiful places like Halifax and St. John and St. John's, Newfoundland. And then when we get to Greenland, we're on to some of the most beautiful, deepest fjords. These are kind of these mountain ranges that come straight out of the ocean, almost, you know, 3,000 feet. And you see muskox kind of clinging to the sides of the rocks. And then we hit uh, three ports in, um, you know, Greenland and move over to Reykjavik in Iceland. And Iceland is like a planet unto itself. It's absolutely amazing. So this cruise is interesting because with Oceana, we include your air out, out of Vancouver, Toronto and Montreal. And if you're in Calgary or Edmonton or Ottawa, we have a, a 250 Canadian dollar add-on. And we take you on the most non-stop direct flights we can get you on. So we always include your air, your taxes, and your cruise. And we're going to talk about O-Life in a minute. But the fact is, on this cruise, for instance, we would fly you 
to New York and you could go all the way to Reykjavik and get off the ship after 14 days. Or you could go to Paris and get off the ship after 32 days, or you could take the 42 days and cruise around. This is one of the things I love about Oceana. Our itineraries are planned so that you can move them back to back and keep going on. Last year, I used to say, why go home? Just stay on the ship and keep going. It's beautiful. So we've got Greenland, we've got Iceland. We start our cruises when we come into the North Cape and the Baltics from Stockholm or Copenhagen or London. But look at this itinerary. I love this itinerary for many reasons. First of all, we only have one. Number two, it's got the beautiful parts of Norwegian fjords. It comes all the way up to the North Cape. It comes into Murmask, which of course is, uh, you know, one of the areas of the explorers uh, hundreds of years ago started to kind of make their way walking on ice up to the North Cape to find it thinking it was land but of course it was an ice shield on the ocean and so there's a lot of history in this cruise and a lot of beautiful ports to visit but one of the reasons I love the North Cape is because you'll never find as many beautiful fjords as you find in Norway and it's absolutely stunning so we take these cruises that are 12 and 14 and 16 days <coughs> you know will agree with me I'm sure when I tell you that you can can't actually experience Oceana in under 12 or 14 days. You need that time because we've got so many things on board to also offer you. But when I think about the itineraries that we do in the Baltics, and I think about these gorgeous itineraries, for instance, from Stockholm to Copenhagen in August here, and through 22 and into 23, we'll have all these kind of similar itineraries, whether they're 10, 12, or 14 days. And so we get to go to places like St. Petersburg, and we take one of our small ships into that we dock right here in front of the Hermitage. Imagine this, they say in the Hermitage alone, if you were to stop in front of every exhibit for one minute and you didn't stop, it would take you three years nonstop to get to the sixth floor. And this is one of the most beautiful buildings. And yet three quarters of all of the treasures of the Hermitage are not even in this building. They're in huge vaults all over the city. They say if one room was sold, Russia would be the richest country in the world. It's unbelievable. And this is Church of Our Savior. So of course, in, in St. Petersburg, places like this, you need a visa. And we can provide that for you or Merit can provide that for you. But we will be able to just come into small groups and be able to see these beautiful places. Peterhof Palace and all the golden gold and, you know, the gilded gold and, and statues. And Russia is absolutely a, an amazing place to go. I always call it kind of this historic walking history kind of cruise adventure because there is a lot of walking to it and a lot of beautiful museums. Tallinn, Estonia. This is one of the most, I think, beautiful little fabled cities in all of Europe. It's small, it's beautiful. You know, at the beginning of when we start our shore excursions, we will probably have to have everything escorted uh, before you can get off the ship. We won't know that yet. We're thinking right now, but you're thinking in 2022. And so there'll be lots of different, uh, you know, kind of uh, changes by then. But this is where Rapunzel came from. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let your hair down. This is one of the most beautiful little colorful cities as you walk through the village. And for those who are interested in walking tours, and Tina's going to tell you a little bit about this as we go into the med, but whether it's walking tours or, you know, going on a green tour where you want to see a wind combine and see some things that are happening environmentally, or whether you want to go shopping or sitting in a cafe, these are the kinds of things that Oceana will provide for you on these beautiful go local tours. Helsinki, historic with World War I. Berlin, we come into the port of Hamburg, and we take you into Berlin for an hour and a half train ride. And this is the Brandenburg gates and you see the concerto playing and there's Wiener schnitzels and galleries and museums. It's one of the most beautiful cities I've been in in Europe. It's the new Paris of Europe as everyone calls it. So the Baltics are very interesting. And so we do a lot of different things. Some guests wanna go and take a Baltic cruise but they wanna be able to hit Oslo or Norway while they're at it or they wanna do the Kiel Canal. And we've got those kind of itineraries when we come into the Baltic. Oslo is one of the cleanest, most wonderful cities as well in Northern Europe. Um, of course, the capital of Norway, but unbelievable city to go in and lots of parks and beautiful things to do. And then we end our cruise in Amsterdam or Copenhagen and that kind of ends our Baltics and our Northern Europe. 
biggest thing I want to tell you is that when you look at our itineraries, and we'll be able to make sure that Merit has all of the information for the digital calendars we have that take you right through the end of 22 and into the beginning of 23. Well, I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and I'm going to let Tina take over on her screen to tell you a little bit more about the Mediterranean. So take it away, Tina. Um, thank you so much, um, Kathy, and it's just a pleasure to be with everyone today. So let's just do the switch over. Perfect. So Kathy did a great job of painting the picture of all these amazing ports that we visit in the Baltics and Northern Europe. So I'm going to focus a little bit more on the Mediterranean. And I thought what I would do is illustrate some of the things that Kathy's already been saying. And one of those is the way that we visit a destination, because you've got a lot of choices out there. There are many ships that cruise the Mediterranean and may visit some of these ports of call, but I think where Oceana excels is how we do it. Um, and one of the things you're gonna notice is I've listed the time that we arrive in port and the time that we leave. And what jumps out right away is look at this itinerary from Barcelona to Venice. It's on our beautiful Riviera in 2022. And we've got three late night departures. You've got a 10 p.m. departure from Monte Carlo. And of course, if you're in Monte Carlo, you wanna see it at night. You wanna go up to the Grand Casino and really get the sense of it. Um, we also leave Dubrovnik at 10 o'clock at night and also Copper Slovenia. Uh, and then you've got an overnight in Venice. So just like Kathy was illustrating a few minutes ago, St. Petersburg, one of the things I've always loved about Oceana is in many places we spend even two nights, like St. Petersburg, many of those itineraries will give you two nights in three full days. Venice, I don't think you can take in in just a day. And so you, you arrive in the morning, you have the night, and then you disembark the next morning. Uh, so the itinerary planning is so important to, to the experience um, that you have with us. Um, so much so that our chairman and president to this day, 18 years later, are still involved in selecting the ports and the itineraries. Um, so again, um, Riviera, this is a 12 day. We are just gonna highlight a few today, but we have so many beautiful, beautiful itineraries. Um, and the other thing I wanted to talk a little bit about is so many of our travelers on Oceana are experienced cruisers and they've been to Rome and they've done the Mediterranean multiple times. So they love cruising and they love to go back. But in talking to our past guests, they would say to us, you know, we, we ask, we ask, you know, what are you looking for next? What are the trends? What, what is going to excite you? And what we found is they wanted more than just sightseeing. So yes, you can go to the Vatican in Rome or you can see the Colosseum. But if you've already done those things, and you wanna meet the local people. We have an entire series of tours now called Go Local Tours. And this particular one is offered on the itinerary I just showed you. Uh, we offer this in Provence as well as in Rome. And you actually go to a farm, you meet the farmers and the family, and you meet these dogs. And I know many people are familiar with pigs um, when you go truffle hunting, but these are dogs that are trained um, to dig up the truffles and they dig them up very, very carefully. Somehow they know not to destroy this precious um, fungi. And we collect, um, we collect the truffles, the black truffles, and then we go back and have a wonderful farm luncheon um, highlighting pasta with truffles, pizza with truffles, and it's a marvelous day. And you know, this is just one, but our Go Local tours can be anything from spending the day um, shepherding, uh, being a shepherd for the day. It can be bicycling. It could be learning the local language. And so we're really excited um, to share these Go Local tours with our guests and how it's resonating with them. And um, as Kathy said, we have been very busy during our pause and cruise operations. And so behind the scenes, we are developing many, many more of these exciting, small and personalized tours. I heard Kathy mention um, wanting to go back to Israel and the Holy Land. And gosh, I think that was my last trip, um, you know, before everything shut down. And I had the opportunity to cruise um, from Haifa and it absolutely fabulous. The country just um, amazed me at the, the culture and, and the history. And, and again, you can't do it justice in just a day. And so we start on this beautiful itinerary aboard the Nautica. 
um, in Haifa and we overnight in Haifa. Then we go spend another entire day in Ashdod. So you really have the opportunity to immerse in the culture of Israel and see the sites. Um, we then visit Cyprus and Rhodes, um, one of my favorite countries, Turkey. And um, you can visit the ruins of Ephesus outside of Kushadasi. And what I love here is we're not leaving till 11 o'clock at night. Again, you notice we've highlighted those late night departures for you. Um, we also have a late night departure in Syros, Greece, um, Athens, one day at sea. So the other thing you'll notice is we are very port intensive. So we actually have some itineraries in the Mediterranean where you may not even have a sea day. And again, our guests tell us that they, they really want that experience of the, of the ports. Um, we then go to Albania, um, Dubrovnik, Croatia, and then once again, another overnight in Venice, Italy. And as I talk about some of these itineraries, you'll notice that we have a variety of specialty tours. So we just talked about one of the go local tours, but we also have wellness tours um, that have been put together by Aquamar, our uh, spa and vitality center. And these are for our guests that want to travel and they want to stay active and they want to stay healthy. Um, I too am of the generation of Kathy, and, and I think we all agree in, in our age, you know, we, we want to be active. And so we're offering bicycle trips and kayaking and yoga. You could do meditation in a park uh, in Mallorca. And so this particular tour is offered on this itinerary. And this is an island, Lokram Island, off of Dubrovnik. So we'll board a boat and we'll um, go out to the island. It's picture perfect scenery. And um, then we will actually do yoga under this olive grove overlooking the Mediterranean Sea. So I can't think of a better place if you wanna stay healthy to do it um, in, a, in a spot like this. And then we'll return to Dubrovnik um, for a walking tour of the old city. So again, the, these wellness tours are offered on many, many, many departures all over the globe um, where we sail. So now moving a little bit out of the Mediterranean and going to Ireland. Um, this is a beautiful itinerary. And so one of the things you'll notice is some of the itineraries I showed you initially cover multiple countries. So you can see a region of the world, but then perhaps you wanna just explore Ireland or you just wanna explore Italy. You're gonna notice the vast majority of ports on this cruise are focused just on Ireland with one stop in the UK. Um, but this is one of our shorter itineraries. It's eight days. And to me, this is a great opportunity if you're going to Ireland, perhaps you come in early or you stay later and Merit Travel can certainly customize your pre and post or work with Oceana Cruises. We have lovely pre and post um, hotel and escorted tour options before and after our cruises. Um, but this itinerary visits Waterford. Uh, we visit Cork and Bantry and Galway. And so you can almost see we, we circumnavigate um, the entire um, coast of Ireland. Uh, again, ending back in Dublin. And this is one of my favorites. So I, I think I'm one of those foodies and maybe that's why I love Oceana so much. Um, but we, um, not only do we have hands-on cooking schools on board Marina and Riviera, but we partnered with our chefs and they have curated these amazing culinary discovery tours ashore. And so if you're the type of person that goes to a destination and you wanna learn about the cuisine or the local markets and, and you wanna kind of learn about that destination through their food culture, our culinary discovery tour is, is perfect for you. And this one is at the Bali Malo Cookery School outside of Cork. And our, our chef Jacques Pepin, our master chef Jacques Pepin is actually friends with the owner here. They have a hundred acres with organic farming. Uh, they're a very um, serious school so we can uh, visit the classes and the students that are learning here. And then we'll have an amazing lunch at Bally Malo. So again, an example of just one of many of our culinary discovery tours. So I know we've been talking mostly about Europe, but we did want to give you an option a little bit closer to home. Uh, we do cruise in Alaska with a beautiful regatta. And as Kathy was saying, she saw regatta in Vancouver. Um, to me, she is the perfect size ship for Alaska because she's Again, only 684 guests and 30,000 tons. So think about when you're coming into a port like Ketchikan or Juneau or Skagway, you know, you're off the ship in moments. You know, you don't have the lines, you don't have the waiting. Um, and yet again, you've got like in Juneau, an 11 o'clock departure. In Victoria, British Columbia, an 11 p.m. departure. 
Um, so this is only one of many Alaskan itineraries. They range anywhere from seven, eight, nine, ten 10 uh, days and beyond. We even do Alaska going all the way through Kamchatka over to Japan. Um, so you, if you want something more exotic, we have that option for you. Um, but in Alaska, um, the other thing that Oceana offers are evening excursions. Uh, so if you wanna get a little bit of a, a taste of Alaska, this happens to be another cooking school um, and we'll learn, you know, maybe they'll do salmon that night or king crab, and then they'll use some of the local unique ingredients um, like pine needles and, and kelp. And it's amazing how creative the chefs are. Um, this tour is offered outside of Juneau, and then we wrap it up by doing a microbrewery tasting. Um, so again, gosh, we could do probably a full hour just on excursions, but we do offer so, so many, in fact, 3,000 different tours and excursions. And I do want to add, so no matter what your interest, if you want to see sites because it's your first time or you're going back to a destination for the third or fourth time, I think you'll find something very, very unique um, on the Oceana um, destination experience. All right, so I'm going to switch gears and I'm going to talk about that third pillar of distinction, and it's the finest cuisine at sea. And, you know, I know a lot of cruise lines say that, but truly from the very beginning, Oceana set out to, to really own this part in the industry. And we set the bar very, very high. And I think there's three reasons, three areas that we focus on where we can deliver and execute on the finest cuisine at sea. And the first is the team that we hire. So the gentleman in the upper right-hand corner is Jacques Pepin. He's a, a master chef, world renowned, and he has overseen our culinary program since day one. And he's helped us hire some of the, the most creative and talented staff from all over the world. They come from some of the finest hotels, um, some of them Michelin starred. And so we invest in our team on board. We also invest in the ingredients. So one of the things that Jacques will say is, you know, if, if you have a lousy tomato, there's nothing you can do with it. So we spend more money on the raw food ingredients than any cruise line out there, including the all-inclusive luxury lines. Um, so for instance, if it's the beef, we do 26 day age prime beef even in the poolside bar Waves Grill, we serve Kobe beef burgers. Um, I'm in the United States, so I don't know what it would be in Canadian, but you know, you pay $15, $20 for, for a burger like that here in the United States. Um, but we spare no um, expense when it comes to the fine ingredients. And then, you know, the, the other thing that we do is we focus on the equipment. And I know that doesn't sound very glamorous when you're dining at Jacques or you're dining in the Terrace Cafe. Um, you're not thinking about the equipment in the kitchen, but believe me, the chefs are. And if we provide them you know, the top rated equipment, they're gonna produce um, amazing cuisine. I'm gonna share a really interesting statistic that I heard a few years ago from um, one of our executives at the company. And they said, you know, Tina, on the Marina and Riviera, we have, um, we have 1,250 passengers and we have 800 staff. But when you think about it, 400 of those staff members are dedicated to our guest culinary experience. And so I don't think there's another cruise line out there that can share a statistic like that. And so, you know, I think Kathy started the presentation by saying it's all about the details and that's what Oceana executes. Um, better yet, for those of you who've maybe not had a chance to sail with us, when you dine at any of our specialty restaurants, there's no additional fees. Um, again, you're, you're getting a glimpse of some of the dining rooms here. One of um, my favorite experiences um, is, is dining outdoors al fresco, and we offer that option a little more casual. Um, again, for those of you who are based or, or more interested in healthy cuisine, we have a very extensive vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free um, menus in our restaurants, um, like hundreds of options, um, none of them boring. I mentioned the Culinary Center earlier. This is really fun. Doesn't matter if you're a chef or, or you know, you don't cook it at all, or you're very seasoned. Uh, these classes are participatory um, and very, very popular and very affordable. I think it's about $69 to do a 90 minute class. Um, again, hands-on. And lastly, um, I'm gonna talk just about two, two other kind of unique experiences, some things I think we do a little different on board. On Marina and Riviera, we have this space called La Reserve. And La Reserve is, is a beautiful room that seats 24 guests. 
and we do wine tastings during the day, but in the evening, we'll do a six course wine pairing dinner in conjunction with Wine Spectator. And just a little over a year ago, we partnered with Dom Perignon to do a multiple course champagne tasting event. Um, so it's a full night dinner and it is over the top. Um, you know, we hear over and over again from our guests, this is one of the best meals they've ever had in their lives. <clears throat> so I would say if you, you like food and wine or champagne, this is really one of those splurge moments that will be very, very memorable. And I think I mentioned I like dining al fresco. One of my favorite things on board the ship is to go to the Terrace Cafe and sit outside and enjoy a meal as we're sailing out of port. And what we've begun to do in the Terrace Cafe, and I think over 20 ports and we're growing these, is we do chef market dinners. And so the chef will go ashore and you know they'll go to the local fishmonger and the local market and they'll bring aboard all the local ingredients. So if we're in Greece, they might do shrimp and sea bream and we'll, we'll pour Greek wines and have Greek music and then all the small plates from Greece. And our guests absolutely love it. And so again, you're getting a little bit more feel of that culture and experience it, experience it, it through the culinary traditions of that country. So, you know, we could talk on and on, but I think what I want to end with is talking about the tremendous value of Oceana Cruises. And when Kathy began, she, she um, did a great job of talking about our sweet spot in the cruise industry and that we really straddle between the premium and the luxury brands. And so what I like to think of the Oceana experience is that once you get on board, you're never going to be nickeled and dimed. So yes, a uh, Another premium cruise line might start at a lower cost, but then you get on board and you're charged for everything, right? Internet or specialty restaurants. So with Oceana, so much more is included as you see here. So our everyday inclusions are unlimited internet. All of those restaurants are complimentary, 24 hour room service of which we are expanding that menu as we speak. So when we return to sale, you will have many more options. Um, small things like, Poor, um, shuttles from the port to the city center. So you don't have to worry about, well, how am I gonna get from the pier in Marseille to, to the medieval city center? All of those things are included um, on Oceana Cruises. Um, fitness classes, all the bottled waters and soft drinks, uh, specialty coffees, and even free laundry. Um, additionally, several years ago, we introduced a program called O-Life Choice. And I like to think of this as inclusive by choice. So rather than say um, everything is included, we bundle in free round trip air from um, major gateways, including uh, major gateways across Canada. And then you'll get to choose what fits your vacation style. So would you prefer free shore excursions, a free alcoholic beverage package, or a free chef board credit? So you can really customize it, work with your merit travel advisors and pick the amenities that you prefer. Uh, we're also thrilled to announce that we are now including free airport transfers that begins in the winter of 21 into 22 and will apply to um, every sailing that we have. And certainly on, on select itineraries, we have premium economy air upgrades, which make traveling to those destinations in Europe and other places much more comfortable um, when you arrive. So of course, working with Merit Travel, they are your travel professionals. They're the ones that can help guide you to select the cabin category that's perfect for you, the itinerary. And also they have exclusive amenities that you're not gonna find other places, including coming to us directly. So we highly recommend working with your Merit Travel professional. They have a list of many departures all the way through 2022 with free prepaid gratuities. That's quite a value. If you think you know a 10 day cruise for two people, that's going to be worth $320 in US um, for your gratuities. They also have selected hosted voyages through their affiliation with Signature Travel Network. Um, so again, some, some wonderful values to be had. And we are about, believe it or not, we're just a little shy over a month away from launching our 2023 season, our winter collection of 23. So for those of you planning ahead, late 21, 22, 23, we think we have the itinerary for you. And of course, because you've joined us today and you've been wonderful listening to us and, and learning more about Oceana, we have a special merit exclusive. We are offering a $200 shipboard credit um, per couple for new bookings made in veranda and above. And that's gonna be valid from today through the end of the month. 
Um, so to take advantage of that offer, um, your Merit Travel Advisors will be very familiar with that and will make sure that we offer that extra exclusive when you make your reservation. So with Tina, that, I am so going to bring Kathy back. Yep, Tina, thank you so much. That is, uh, I just love listening to you about our shore excursions and all the different things we can do. And I think that's the beauty of having a small ship, small shore excursions, everything intimate. Yeah. And I think it's perfect for where the world is headed right now. Uh, a couple of things, everybody. I want to just say that, you know, on this show, we did not put our, um, you know, kind of tactical offers. We have a beautiful program. We obviously sell in Canadian dollars for our Canadians. Uh, we hold the exchange very, uh, you know, a, a really great rate. But we also have what we call our Canadian resident savings. Those are an extra percent in veranda and above on certain sailings of ours. So Merit can help you with that. If you're a solo traveler, we have single supplement sailings. And usually it's 200% on our uh, kind of peak sailings, uh, paying double. But the fact is, is on a lot of sailings we have, we've got some sailings at 150%. So please talk to your Merit advisor about that, as well as past guest savings. So, and as Tina mentioned, in, on March 3rd, we announce our tropics and our exotics, everything into the South Pacific and Africa and all the kinds of stuff that we're doing um, over into March 3rd will be for all of 2023. So a couple of other things I just want to quickly mention, you know, when we talked about, and both Tina and I mentioned this, but, you know, when we talked about being that upper premium market, fitting between the premium and the luxury lines, things that were different were things that 18 years ago that... Oceana was the first cruise line that said, we're going to have open dining seating. We're not going to charge for people to dine in our restaurants. The only exception, of course, is La Reserve that Tina talked about with the Dom Perignon tasting and the Bourgeois. Uh, there's different menus that you can do in, on that beautiful room of 24 gas. But every other restaurant's um, open dining, and it's between 6 and 10 o'clock at night. If you walked in and said, I want a table for two, our maitre d' might say, gee, you, you, can you wait 15 minutes? And we've got a beautiful little waiting room with a fireplace in it. Fireplace doesn't work, but we've got fireplaces on our ships and they're absolutely beautiful. They give you the feeling of just being in a home. So we said we wanted to have open dining and that meant that we wanted to be more casual. We were the first cruise line that said we're going to have a country club kind of atmosphere, uh, even though in Canada we don't really have country clubs. But what we meant was a casual set, a casual feeling to the ship. So we do not require suits. We do not require, you know, gowns or anything like that. We do not have formal evenings on board our ship. There are people who do get dressed up beautifully, but we're, you're not going to see the white beater t-shirt and ripped up jeans. During the day, it's completely casual. Shorts, t-shirts, all that kinds of stuff. But when you come to evening, it's a beautifully dressed crowd, but it's not a formal crowd at all. And that's what we want to give you the feeling because we're port intensive. We want to have that major feeling of having a relaxed atmosphere. We were the cruise line that said we're not going to have art auctions instead we're going to put five to seven million dollars of original artwork on our ship so it's going to be a, a museum it's in fact one of our only audio vox um, kind of tours you can just go to the front desk and get an audio vox and walk around and see original picassos and mure sculptures and things like that so it was wonderful and of course we uh, we love every guest age there is you know we don't have a kids program we said we're not going to have a kids program but we're going to welcome kids on our ship we were the cruise line that said there's not going to be any waiting because we're small there's just not going to be any lines or crowds or anything like that so everything we did was based on your world your way that's our slogan and when tina talked about kind of having this old life experience of whether you had your um you know kind of uh, alcoholic package or you had a shipboard or you had short excursions, I can tell you that from a guest point of view, it is a beautiful thing to have it inclusive by choice because there's people who don't drink, so they don't need it all included. There's people who don't like short excursions who don't need all that included. There's people who just say, well, I'll I want to do a shipboard credit and go to the spa and have a wonderful massage or use it in one of our shops on board the ship. That's the kind of stuff that Oceana has. So I think that um, for you, the big thing is, is no matter what cruise line you go on, when we all do start to sail again, it's going to be fantastic. And all of us are gearing up for a wonderful, wonderful 2022 season and beyond. And I know that you will too. But the other part of it is, is just to make sure that if you haven't sailed on Oceana, or if you have, 
you know that you're coming home to this beautiful small experience that you can slip into a port like St. Petersburg where you're right in front of the Hermitage instead of an hour and a half out with the bigger ships or you can come into Marseille or you can come into beautiful places like Kapoor, Slovenia and be right there in the heart of it or Bordeaux. So things that are Oceania are famous for are the things that will never make you actually the reason you won't buy the cruise but it's always the reason that people return is the beautiful service, the beautiful product that we have. And as Tina mentioned about the food, I can honestly tell you that I have done so many culinary tours on Oceana and I'm a foodie as well. I love cooking. I love eating. Um, but I have to say they're done so beautifully and the, the choices, it's not about the luxury side of, of rich foods. It's about the choices of fresh foods that you have all over the ship. And with the plant-based new menu of over 250 items, you've got a choice for everybody. So I just want to thank you on behalf of Tina and myself and Oceana. And I really hope you come home to the new familiar, come home to Oceana Cruises and I'll hand it over to Holly again or Annabelle. Thank you. That was an amazing presentation. And Kathy and Tina, you guys did such a good job. You actually, um, it captured most of the questions, but um, we do have some more virtual travel experiences, virtual experiences coming up. They are on the screen. Please join us for in the future. And we do actually have a lot of questions as well. And I am going to go over some of them, even though you've touched on some of the answers, I think people would appreciate a more in detailed description or answer. So the first one we always get asked this is, what about single supplements? Do you have cabins like some cruise lines already do that don't have a single supplement? Well, we have single supplements for sure. And, you know, I always say, especially when I'm in person to someone and I'm talking to a guest and they're solo travelers and I go, you have to pay 200% on this sailing, but don't freak out yet because in between those sailings, we pull your air and we pull a lot, a lot of savings out. So your merit uh, advisor can give you some really great stuff. I can tell you that there isn't a soul at merit who does not phone to fight on your behalf. Um, they'll always phone. But we do have sailings, as I mentioned, and I'll make sure, Annabelle, that you get those are the single supplement sailings that we have special offers on at 150% instead of 200. Um, on our new ships, the Allure class, even though we haven't heard heard this officially so far we are I, I i'm hoping that we're looking at having actual single state rooms uh for actual singles uh and lots of brand new ships being built are doing that so that's going to be really exciting okay uh, the next question and i think you again you did touch on this but the pricing uh, is it in canadian currency and are children inclusive Children are not inclusive. They pay a lower rate. They pay, the, I think, Tina, if I'm not uh, mistaken, they pay the uh, lowest fare. Isn't that right? Or, or no, I can't remember. Sorry, uh, Tina. You know, I, it's, I, I can't recall either, Kathy, off the top, but we can certainly get that information yeah. to merit. Um, and it's a special third and fourth um, person rate. And we do have, you know, triple and quad um, accommodations on board. Yeah. And, and the other thing, too, is, yes, in Canadian dollars, we have, as a Canadian, you can book in Canadian dollars. We started that about five years ago. Uh, you can also pay in U.S. dollars if you want to. Canadian dollar, uh, the exchange, I think, is around a dollar thirty right now. So um, so we'd have that. And as I mentioned, we also, and we'll equip you with this, the Canadian resident savings, which are about 60 different sailings going into 2022 that offer an extra 10% savings. So the exchange is amazing when it comes out to that. Good to know. Uh, there actually has been a couple people have asked, will the video presentation be available to view again? And the answer to that is yes. Right a, a few days after this call, your travel advisor or a travel advisor from Merit Travel will be emailing you and they will include the link to this recording, this presentation. Um, the other question was, can you leave the ship a couple of ports before the end of it? For example, can we get off in Tirana, Albania instead of ending in Venice? Yeah, I'll, I'll answer that. Most of the time, yes, you have to get special permission. So of course your merit advisor would come to us through special services and we would make sure that we can clear them in Albania. 
um, or wherever they want to get, wherever the guest wants to get off. However, we will charge you full fare. We will not break the fare down for two less days or whatever it is. So you'll still pay full fare. And, you know, it's interesting. We've, we've had that happen many times. People say, well, I've got family over there. I want to, I want to see this specifically. I don't care about the last two days or the first two days of the cruise. As long as we know about it and as long as we can clear it through authorities, then that's perfect. Yes, is the answer. Yeah. Uh, somebody's asked about the dress code. It was more of a comment and you did also mention it, but the dress code, is there a dress code? Well, I wouldn't say there's an official dress code, but we call it country club casual, everybody. And I think that's what is so cool about Oceana. I, after all these, you know, 44 years in the cruise industry, I don't necessarily now in my mid 60s want to get dressed up anymore, but I want to feel nice and I want to dress well. I think the fact is it's a it's a casual cruise line. There are people who will still sometimes my husband, who's a hotelier at heart. Uh, for many years, when I started with Oceana coming from Crystal, he said, well, I'm going to take a suit just because I think I need a tie and a jacket. And I said, you don't need one. Um, and so, you know, there's very few occasions. In fact, the first cruise we ever took on Oceana, he didn't wear a suit at all. Um, and he's quite a formal guy. But the fact is, is that it's a beautifully dressed casual affair. And I, Tina, I don't know if you want to, uh, you know, kind of hit on that, but I yeah. think that's how I would explain it anyway. I think that's a, a really a good way to explain it. And a lot of times I will say, you know, for ladies, if you wore you know, a, a cocktail dress or, you know, a, a nice resort dress, you'd be a pantsuit, you'd be perfectly comfortable. You would, I would leave the gowns at home. And for the gentleman, if you wore a collared shirt, you know, a long sleeve button down shirt or even a polo shirt, typically that's what you'll find. A few gentlemen will wear a jacket. I very seldom see ties. Um, but it's also like Kathy said earlier, you're not gonna see the cutoffs and the t-shirts at night in the dining room. So it's that kind of casual elegance. Well, and it's so funny. I remember years ago, I had a gentleman, uh, you know, who said, he stood up in my crowd and he said, oh, Kathy said, everything you said about Ocean is so true. And he said, I just have to tell you though, when it came, I, I've always loved wearing my tux. And he said, and I knew Oceana said they were casual, but I didn't believe them. I took my tux along and I wore my tux and I got a standing ovation in the dining room <laughs> because everyone thought that he was the president of Oceana and he Ooh. milked it for everything. But, you know, there's very, there's very few times you'll see a suit and you know, there's very few times you'll see, you know, high heels. And, but, there, but there are instances, I've sailed on a holiday sailing. I did around South America um, a, a few years ago and at Christmas and people did dress up a little because it was Christmas and the holidays and Hanukkah and stuff. So it was, it was kind of cool, but um, it wasn't formal and there are no formal evenings on Oceana. And I think that's the one thing I always see about the difference between the big premium ships and, and uh, you know, and uh, Oceana and the luxury is that, you know, on the premium ships, you'll see having these formal evenings but right after dinner, people run back to the staterooms, get dressed in their jeans and go out again. And we just didn't want that to happen. We wanted people to feel comfortable from the very get go. So we started that. And I think that has just been amazing for Oceana. People love that because we are port intensive. There's lots of times you come back to the ship at five o'clock or six o'clock and you don't feel like dressing up. So you just can go up to our Terrace Cafe and have this beautiful regional grilled cuisine, or you can go to one of our six open dining restaurants. They're, they're amazing. We didn't, in an hour, we really just don't have a chance to tell you all about our restaurants, but we have on our small ships of 30,000 ton, four dining rooms that you can go to, and they're exquisite. They seat 80 people, and you don't need a reservation, but it's so fabulous to be able to be intimate in an Italian restaurant or a, a polo grill that has just chops and beautiful things like that, or go up to the Terrace Cafe and sit outside mm -hmm. under these, watch the world go by. I mean, I can't tell you enough about the choices and Holly, you've sailed on it. So you're saying, mm -hmm. you know, the food was fantastic, but it really is. It's not the reason you're going to buy a cruise, but it's the reason that every single time when you're on that ship and you order a cappuccino with a lemon twist or whatever you want in it, the second time you go to that bar, because of the service on the ship, they know how you like your cappuccino. They know how you like your Americano. They know how you like your steak. And if you like hot mustard with it or whatever, 
everything we do, people rave about. And I think that's why we get these 10 out of 10 ratings. Um, okay, next question. Uh, somebody's asked about uh, how much is an average price? I know this is going to be a hard one. Average price of an excursion, for example, in, the Ala in Alaska or the Mediterranean, what are people looking at as extras? Tina, do you want to answer that? Or um, I can. Yeah, you know, our excursions have a, a broad range. And I would say, you know, there are many excursions around $100 per person. Um, but there will be some that are less and there'll be some that are more, um, particularly when we do these one of a kind, unique, very small group excursions, or we can even do like private car and driver for a couple or a family. Um, so there's a huge range, but what you certainly can do is on the Oceana Cruises website, if you had a particular area of the world in mind, like Alaska or Europe, you could go and look at any port and then you could just explore the excursions in Rome and it'll give you a description and it'll give you the current pricing. So that's probably a good place to start. Um, you also can purchase shore excursion packages. So, well, the first option is you could choose the shore excursion uh, O-Life choice with the bundled shore excursions where we give you X number of excursions based on the length of the cruise. If you didn't do that, you could bundle and purchase a package where we would discount. If you buy X number of tours, we'll give you a 25% savings on all of the excursions you've selected. So there's lots of different ways. And I think that's where um, our travel experts at Merit can guide you through that process as you're planning. And I think the, just to add on really quickly too, as you know, you've got that beautiful shore excursion package if you want it with Olife. So we have uh, shore excursions that can be included. I'm personally not a shore excursion kind of gal, but I love the small shore excursions that we do that are kind of cool that Tina was talking about. I've done uh, bicycle riding. I've done all the uh, walking tours. I've done foodie tours. I've done that kind of stuff. And I love them because they are small and they're intimate and there's, they take you into some really, really interesting places that the average you know person would never see. But overall, you're right, Tina. I think anywhere between 60 and you, you can go up to $400. The other thing I just on based on that too is I want to make sure that everybody understands when we include air tax and cruise and olife and everything else that we've got here um, with that the fact is is that you can pull your air out and do your own air Vir merit can help you with that virtually they can just help you they kind of kind of um, make your own itinerary the way you want it so we have a program called custom air so you can extend to either side for three weeks which is kind of cool um, but yeah, so we've got all sorts of ways to make sure your holiday is perfect. And that's because Merit and ourselves really work closely together as a, almost like a family to make sure that you're getting what you need. I'm seeing a lot of on the chat, uh, Annabelle, lots of comments on just people who have cruised with Oceana before. And yes, thank you definitely. everybody for such beautiful comments. And, you know, yes. it's funny, there's so many people who have never sailed before on any ship. And so, you know, I, I'm sure from all the publicity over this last year, they might not ever sail. But people who have cruised before understand how incredibly safe cruising is. People who have cruised on Oceana before understand the intimacy and the service levels and everything else that have it. But I think that Overall, if I was, you know, kind of looking at this presentation myself, I'd say, wow, this woman really talks a lot. But number two <laughs> is that the fact is, is that to be on a smaller ship, to be on a, a ship that has so many um, kind of interest for the guest versus just, you know, we're not a company that likes to nickel and dime you. We're not a company that forces you to take our shore excursions. In fact, when in normal days, even as the ship comes into port, we always have someone sitting right in our hotel lobby of the ship who talks about the things you can do if you don't take a short excursion with Oceana and that you could do on your own if you want to take a train into uh, Firenze, you know, um, to go and see David, you're on your own without going on a short excursion. So there's so many things. And what Tina mentioned about the shuttles it included in and out of these cities, when you come into Venice, as an example, now there's no ships that can actually dock right in St. Mark's Square. We used to be able to. I remember on one of my first Oceana cruises, we docked right in front of St. Mark's Square. 
and um, for two nights. But now all ships have to move out of the city for almost a uh, you know a forty minute drive. But so we include that shuttle into St. Mark's Square and back. Most premium lines, it's not a slight to them because their prices are lower to begin with. You know, we'll charge you thirty euros to get in and out of St. Mark's Square. So the value that we pump into Oceana, or that, and what I like to always say, everybody, and this is my final comment. I think we are a cruise line that includes things that are really important to travelers. So when it comes to shuttles and not having to pay for laundry and not having to pay for nickel and diming all the way along for, I want a coffee or I want a little, you know, Americano or I want, you know, um, a, a beautiful uh, hand, you know, muffin or whatever it is, or one of our fresh chocolate eclairs, uh, you know, and our croissants that are just all hand made, everything is on the ship is handmade. Those are the kind of things, I don't want to pay for those as a guest. I've paid for that in the past. I don't want to do it again. I want things that are included that are important to me as a traveler. And that's Oceana, truly. So there's just a, I know everybody's starting to get impatient and drop off. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. I'm of everybody's, everybody's time, <laughs> but there are some questions and I'm going to ask them really quickly. Um, do you use big buses for your excursions? We have in the past. Uh, we don't know what will happen in the future they, they, because there are big buses. We, it doesn't mean we'll fill them. We never have filled them to the rim. We've always put out of a 48 guest, uh, you know, bus, we've always put more, no more than 32 or 33 people on. Um, but now we might use big buses that may have 20 people on. We don't know yet. Those are all the things that are coming under the health protocols with shore excursions, but we will not Perfect. crowd anybody. We also have tours that um, are smaller in size. And so when you're um, looking at the different excursion options on online with us, you can see if it's a small tour or the maximum that we carry on that tour. Okay. And what size will the Allure ships be? We don't know any of that quite yet. <laughs> but I would imagine probably close to the Marina and Riviera, 60,000 tons, I would say in that. Mm -hmm. I don't think we'll ever get bigger than that. Mm -hmm. We still want to remain a small cruise line. And I think this is the last one. What kind of entertainment do you have on your ships? Oh, wow. That's a good one. I love our entertainment. Um, first of all, we, we do a lot of, I think we do one show every night. Uh, when I started with Oceana, our entertainment wasn't that great, to be honest, not compared to some of the big lines. We don't, we don't have the space on ships to do the big, huge shows that the big cruise lines do. But I think we do very tasteful shows. We are known for our, our enrichment lecturers. And so I have to say those take up a lot of our kind of entertainment because that's what people are interested in. But also, I think when it comes to our shows, they're kind of these kind of smaller scale uh, routines, don't you think, Tina? How would you how would you explain it? Yeah, we 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 do you know um, you know mu musical shows. Um, we do the Broadway productions, but maybe they're not as large in scope as Kathy said because of the size of the lounges. But we have a lot of music. You know, if it's piano in the in the in the martinis, oh, yeah. or if it's um, you know, a band, you know, could be blues or jazz up in Horizons. It could be our quartet in the grand hallway as you're coming into dinner. Um, so, so a lot of music, a lot of enrichment. Um, you know, we have lots of daily activities that are posted in, in you know, the onboard newspaper. Um, so yeah, and I do agree, Kathy, it's really, um, we've focused on it in the last, what, five years yeah. extensively and um, people enjoy it. Yeah, it's really changed. And I think the other thing too, is when it comes to, and it's not under entertainment, but it is a really important fact. One of the things that always drives me absolutely crazy on bigger ships, and it, again, it's not a slight to them, it's they have to do it because there's so many people, is they make a lot of announcements. We don't make any announcements. We don't even make announcements on disembarkation. So we try not to, if we have to, we have to, but we, other than the captains, you know, uh, talk every morning, but that's one thing I'm always very grateful for. It's, it's not a loud ship experience. It's a very quiet experience, but with real warmth to it. Okay, that's it, ladies. So thank you. And as you can see, I don't know if everybody's read all the comments in the side. I'm not going to read them out because I'm out of time. But there <laughs> have been so many comments about how great Oceana is, um, what food is like, what the itineraries are like. 
and thanking you both for such a informative and um, passionate um, <laughs> talk. So and thank talkative. You <laughs> and talkative, but that's okay. Um, you answered all of our questions. We had times. This is one of the most engaged groups I've seen. Everybody really wanted to know more about your um, what Ocean is all about. So thanks for everybody for attending and hope to see you in a few weeks. When Absolutely. We Come and join our family. We'd love to have you. Goodbye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye -bye. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye.